Blog Talk Radio. All right, I feel good today. Tell them how you feel, Gerald. Come on and get up. Let's praise. Come on, Holy Ghost. Celebration to you all. Uplifted hands, 
fingers snapping, hands clapping, toes tapping. Yes, yes, yes. Your head will be bobbing. Fire, fire, fire. The gospel experience will light at night and fan those flames that's in your spirit, man, woman, boy, or girl, so that you can be that victorious believer in Jesus Christ because God is not a respectful person. No, he's just looking for a humble heart to worship and fellowship with him. In spirit and in truth We will be embracing for our spiritual uplift And refreshment from the book of Galatians 6 Verses 7 and 8 Where we read that the word of God Is declaring a spiritual principle, y'all Of sowing and reaping Basically, it's saying that you will receive Based on what is given We need to expand our benevolence When it comes to God and the things and the people of God. We have received so much mercy, grace, and blessing that we should choose to become the instrumental means by which God's grace will continue to flow to others and to be the primary conduit to give God our sincere praise, honor, and worship. My special guest this year, you all are in for a wonderful, wonderful conversation about mental health and about relationships. She is a licensed professional counselor, none other than woman of God, Tamika Ham is here. And I mean, we're going to break it down. Y'all already know how I love talking about relationships because it's all about relationships. We all have relationships with one another. You say, but Brother Ron, I like to keep it to myself. Well, you know what? The success of our relationship with other people is based on the significance of the relationship that we have with ourselves. I'm probably going to repeat that a little bit later on the show because Holy Spirit God gave that to me a little bit earlier today. And I'm going to share that because, yes, it makes so much sense. So listen, I want you all to understand that we will be having a good wonderful time in God. We're going to have woman of God counselor, motivational speaker, Sharon Nietzsche, Roach, woman of God, to come and share in word of inspiration. It's a recorded message, but it's still powerful. Yes, Lord, we're going to have a good time. So why don't you go ahead and call your family members, your friends. I want you to call a co-worker, a neighbor, or anybody that's in your spirit right now that you know can use some good inspirational words and some very good gospel music. Amen. Goes right there. We've already had prayer. Thank you, Holy Spirit God, for overseeing our lives and for overseeing this platform and this conversation and this offering of praise on this fire gospel experience. But most of all, thank you for lighting the fuse that's about to set the internet and the radio airwaves on Holy Ghost sanctified fire, fire, fire.
is your strength. I need you to grab you a dancing partner. Somebody shout to the Lord yeah. with the voice of joy. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. My mama took me to church when I was 15 years old, dragged me to church, and I heard that preacher talking about Jesus and how he loves me and how great and powerful he is and how he'll always be there for me. And that was enough for me, y'all. I walked down that aisle, and I gave Jesus my hand. I gave that preacher my hand. I gave Jesus my heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mama, because he has and he will make it all right. Sounds of man of God, Greg Cox and Jamal Roberts teaming up to just let you know that it's a beautiful thing when we put our faith, trust, and confidence in God Almighty, and then watch him make it all right. Because we don't be frowning up when we're going through. We keep that sanctified, show enough smile on our face because we're grinning at the devil because in spite of what we're going through, even if it's painful, we already know deep down inside God is just using us as an example of how we go through with confidence, with faith, knowing that God will Make it all right. Beautiful, beautiful song to start this fire gospel experience off. My special guest is here. Woman of God is a licensed professional counselor in the state of Alabama, y'all. She's earned a Master of Science degree at Alabama A&M University in Counseling Psychology in 2001 and started as a helping professional in 1998 working with adolescents after earning her bachelor's degree. Over the years, she has worked with adults in residential, community, mental health, nonprofit organizations, and private practice settings. She has experience working with various mental health issues, interpersonal relationships, and substance abuse. She has a special interest in spirituality and working with women-related Issues, my, my, my. You talk about somebody who has a gift of healing and calling on their life. I am so happy to have here with us on this fire gospel experience, woman of God, licensed professional counselor, Tamika Ham is on this fire gospel experience. And don't y'all know, we are so happy to have this woman of God to bless us with inspiration that I know is going to come straight from God. Amen, amen, amen. Yes. 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 Uh-huh. Thank you, thank you, woman of God. Welcome to Hi. Fire and Gospel Hi. Experience. Ah, how you doing? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm doing wonderful. I'm highly blessed and favored and just blessed to be have this opportunity right now. Thank you, you for inviting me. You, you ah. better say you blessed. You better say you blessed. <laughs> It, it ain't going to do nothing blessed. but just cut. It's just going to confirm with your spirit. See, when you bless, you don't just say it with your mouth. Even if we don't say a word, people can sense a vibe about us that is different from what they have unless they know Jesus like we do. And that's presence of God in yes. and over our lives, woman of God. So please, yes. please, please, why don't you introduce yourself to our listening audience so that we can appreciate who you are in God and what God is doing in your life. All right. Well, you gave a wonderful introduction, uh, but I'll go ahead. Um, I'm Tamika Ham. I'm in um, the Alabama area, Madison, Alabama. Um, I'm a licensed professional counselor. Um, I've recently gotten into more coaching, and we'll get into that a little bit later. And 
I enjoy working with um, individuals. I love what I do. I think it is uh, a calling on my life. Um, it is. And I believe that, you know, um, it's more of us needed out there. You know, and I can go on and on mm-hmm. about that, but it's more of us needed out there. And, uh, you know, I, I just love what I do. I love what I do, and um, I'm, I'm just look excited about sharing, um, you know, any knowledge and information and my personal and professional experiences when, in regards to mental health and spirituality and religion mm-hmm. and all relationship and all of those. So thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Amen. It's my pleasure Amen. because you are one of the many people that are called by God that needs this type of exposure so that people can understand yes. that. See, we, we we look up to people, role models. We'll make role models of anybody that's popular but may not actually have earned that privilege yet. So sometimes we need to understand yes. that maybe our best heroes are living right across the street from us or on our job or somebody in our own yes. family. So um, I'm not going to let you get away from that comment that you made talking about where more (laughs) help is needed, uh, and you'll get to that later. No, we're going to get to that right now because more help is needed, woman of God, and I want you to expand on that. I want you to talk to the people out there because, listen, as far as, look, I've been saying for over four decades, and I know good and doggone well that there's way too many people that say they're sitting on the sidelines. Why don't you talk to them and anybody else that needs some in, uh, inspiration about finding their calling, just like you found yours? Yes. And let me start with um, some statistics I have. And I don't I don't want to get a whole lot into statistics, but, you know, this is where I, you know, I really believe and I feel and I know that more people, you know, need to, you know, this mental health uh, professions is needed all over. You know, we have mm-hmm. 2.4% of blacks make up the U.S. population. 13.4%. Wow. 13.4%. Out of those 13.4%, 16, that's over, 16% have reported some type of mental health issue. Jesus. That's 7 million people. That's mm. three fully populated states that need yeah. mental health, some type of mental health uh, care. And then mm-hmm. I go down to Christians. I'm going to go down to just the Christian people. You know, they come on, it's come statistics on. out there. 106 point million Christians who attend church at least once or twice a month. Have mm. 7 million of them have reported some type of depression or mental health issues. So oh, that's just a couple of uh, statistics I want to just share just to kind of open the eyes of people, make people aware that it's a lot of people out there suffering. I can't do it alone. Mm. It's a lot of counselors out there, and there's still a lot of counselors needed, um, for one. And just, mm. not just counseling, mental health counseling, but just speaking the word of God, you know, ministering to people. We need both. Mm. You know, I, mm-hmm. my motto is, I need Jesus and therapy. I am in therapy. My oh. therapist, you know, and I think that oh, is Jesus. very much needed. You know, it's, we got to help each other. We have to help each other. So, um, yeah. That's kind of where I wanted to go with that. Well, we need we need people. We need we need to uh, we all we all have a purpose in life, and I believe um, whatever your purpose is, it always is to help mm-hmm. someone else. You know, support and Amen. reach out to other people. So, yeah. Amen. 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 Because yeah. there there is a principle I believe that goes with the gratitude of being saved is that you just are compelled to want to see other people saved. You're not just satisfied yeah. with your relationship with God. You want people to experience this overwhelming sense of purpose, destiny, and joy that the truth has been revealed. Now, with that being said, yeah. the truth, the truth being revealed, we have this stigma that's attached to mental health. I ain't going to see yeah. no counselor. I ain't crazy. Come on now. Oh, Let's yeah. talk about how Classic. we have labeled. Classic. Let's talk about how we have labeled people that may need some mental health. Because if you got a pain in your body somewhere, we don't criticize you when you go to a physical doctor. So we need to set a better understanding about when there is a disturbance or pain in my thinking, in my mind. I need to go to the Mm -hmm. folk with people just like I need to go to a doctor for my physical body. Let's talk about how we mislabel and misunderstand mental health. You just pretty much echo what I say all the time. 
Yes, and it is still a stigma. I think, um, you know, more people are in the church particularly are more aware of mental health uh, services are needed, but it's still more uh, that needs Mm. to be spoken about and people need to be aware because it is still a stigma. You know, I even hear yeah. with, um, you know, clients I see now, you know, family members still, well, why are you talking to a counselor? You don't need to tell the counselor mm. your problem. You talk to God mm. about it. And you got so yeah, many yeah. people out there suffering because they've heard that. That's been echoed to them. That's been, and it's a generational thing. You know, it's, it's a generational okay. um, stigma that's going on that mental health is for only for crazy people or, you know, you're yeah, considered yeah. weak or you know, your faith is not strong enough. Uh, you know, you're not having mm. faith in God. You know, and that's what that's we not say. true. That's what we say, and that is so not true. That is a, a generational right. stigma that needs to be burned to the ground. <laughs> Amen. To, Amen. So, yeah. we we want to see that stigma yeah. fall flat, just like the walls of Jericho. So if we got to march around Absolutely. that stigma. Amen. If we got to march around that stigma and shout <laughs> the truth. That's what we're going to do. Yes. And listen to this. Yes. Our solution, we take, we're we, we, we so narrow-minded in our thinking, woman of God. you got to excuse me because you done got me started. But anyway, <laughs> we 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 so narrow-minded and cheap. Yes. We would rather go mm-hmm. get some liquor and cigarettes and self-medicate than to try to yes. go and talk to somebody and get some mm-hmm. pro professional, in-depth understanding about why we do what we do. One of the things that I learned in therapy, because I needed some uh, help, is to keep asking yourself why. Why Mm -hmm. do you do what you do? That will eventually do just like peeling an artichoke. So you don't eat the whole thing. Mm -hmm. you got to peel until you get to the heart of the artichoke. That's the part you eat. You have to keep peeling the layers of behavior and attitude and what we say to get to the heart because even the yeah. bible says the heart is what uh has the issues of life so woman of yes. god how do we who may be concerned about ourselves what are some of the yeah. first signs that you would say to someone that is unsure They've gotten to a point where they're not so much concerned about what people think anymore, but they're not Mm -hmm. quite sure Mm -hmm. if they really do need professional help. Can you share with us some of the Mm -hmm. signs that a person should seek mental assistance and mental help? Sure. Um, Well, one of the main signs of, you know, if you're having an issue, and most of my clients, you know, they either have depression, anxiety, or both, you know, and I deal, and the underlying issue, a lot of those with is uh, related to trauma. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, anytime you have any emotional um, issues going on, and it starts affecting other areas of your life, you know, that's a clear sign, you know, that you may need to go talk to someone. If it's lasting longer than a week, two weeks, you know, you need to probably go yeah. talk to someone. If you find yourself, mm-hmm. you know, uh, can't perform on your job the way you need to, you know, if you're a parent, you know, parent to your children, um, yeah, you know, yeah. if it's just causing some type of issues in other parts of your life, you know, that's a good indication that you need to uh, talk to someone and see what's going on with you. Um, mm. And that's usually where a lot of, you know, people come to me, you know, they're like, you know, this has been going on for so long. i talk to particularly black females that have dealt with depression and anxiety for years. They have suffered for years and (sighs) now deciding to get help because of the narrative, you know, that's out there about, you know, mental health or the stigma that's out there about mental health. So anytime that you, Mm -hmm. for long periods of time, you've just been suffering, you're sad, you know, you have these high levels of anxiety, and also, you know, your, mm-hmm. your relationships are not where they need to be. You know, that's a good indication uh, that you need to talk to someone. So, yeah. Now, let me ask mm-hmm. you this, woman of God, because uh, mm-hmm. you said that so correctly, too. You got right into where I was going next. You said that if you were going <laughs> through some issues for a couple of weeks, that there are people that yeah. have been going through certain things for years yes. to the point where, it, would you say it's possible that someone could actually create 
a new norm for themselves by having extended depression for so long, they start to believe and accept it as being their normal reality. Yes, yes, absolutely. And it, 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 I can even personally, I can speak for that for myself. You know, you, you've been dealing with it for so long, is you just feel like that's that's how it's supposed to be. But no, you know, you could talk to someone, and I'm gonna even go as far as you know. Sometimes medication is needed, and that's another Come thing. On. Some people feel yeah. like, no, I don't want, I don't want to take any medication. Uh, you know, um, you know, that's really make me look like I'm weak or, you know, I can't handle myself. Medication, I, nah, you know, it's a lot of stigma around medication. But sometimes you'll go take medication, you'll go take some pain medication for your pain. You'll go take a Tylenol yeah. for your headache. And I know that's not mm. really in the same family, but we'll, we'll take medication for other part elements, elements of our body. You know, why not our Lord mental Jesus. health? Our mental health, we got mm. it. We got it. <laughs> our mental health is probably more important than the physical because if our mental health is good our physical health will be good you know when yes, we're ma'am. debilitating yes, mentally ma'am. it's going to affect us physically you know mm. you can look at the statistics on stress and heart attacks and Woo! heart disease and, and all these things it starts in the mind you know so if you it gotta does. take some for a short period of time take you something you know and i'm an advocate for natural supplements you know there's all kinds of natural mm. supplements out there now that people can take to help with anxiety and stress. You know, if you want to start there with um, uh, mental health, uh, you know, to treat your mental health with any type of supplements, you can do that. And also, you know, exercise, you know, watching what you're, eat, what you. you're eating. Those type of things also will help, you know, uh, you know, correct some of the issues that we may have mentally. So Amen. that's my feel Amen. on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, too, let me add, because... You know, I have had to seek out professional help myself. This is not uh, mm-hmm. what they call it, uh, groundbreaking news. This is not stop what you're doing, yeah. BBB, all of a sudden <laughs> now, Brother Ron is about to make a huge announcement. I've, I've, I've confessed this on my show. I have uh, yeah. had, had issues. I have had been clinically diagnosed as clinically depressed because of yeah. unhealthy, toxic mm-hmm relationships we go oh hold on yes. don't you don't oh, you stop we're go. we gonna talk about that <laughs> in a minute because that's gonna okay. take up the whole remainder of this show when we start talking about relationships <laughs> but 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 mm-hmm. what i have had to do is because i i i started self-medicating which led to a chemical yes. dependency which led to an addiction yes. and god had to set me free from that but also too i want to say that there's some other signs to look at and that's our eating and sleeping habits sometimes yes. you cannot yes. eat what you're supposed to sometimes you can overeat sometimes you can't sleep at night you have disturbances and sometimes yes. you're sleeping too much these are some of the other signs that we can d- decide uh, and help us determine yeah. that, you know what, I can't keep living like this because I'm in a corner yeah. and that corner has got me boxed in and I'm not enjoying mm-hmm. life. When your personal sense mm-hmm. of self-esteem and happiness mm-hmm. has been derailed and you can't get in touch mm-hmm. with your own feelings of feeling good and feeling good about yourself, those are obvious signs mm-hmm. that you need to reach out and get some help. Now, with all Absolutely. of that being said, woman of God, there is the fear and the shame that's attached to it. How do we step mm-hmm. outside this box of fear and shame and overcome that yes. can go mm-hmm. and get the help we need? Because, see, that's another barrier that we have to just find our way to be set free mm-hmm. from, fear and shame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and as far as fear, you know, fear is something we, we, all, we all have felt. You know, and we feel. That's right. That's right. Sometimes you just got to step out. Um, you know, it's about being courageous. You know, they say fear is mm-hmm. false evidence appearing real. Uh, false evidence appearing real. <laughs> so, you know, we we make up the narratives. You know, some we feed fear by what we think and how we process things uh, in regards to, you know, whatever the issue is. So we just have to step out and. That, that leads me to talk about, you know, one of my main modalities I like to uh, counsel is using the cognitive behavior therapy. You know, think about what you're thinking. Think about what you're thinking. A lot of times what we think mm. and feel, that's going to be the outcome of our behavior. So if we're aware of our thought process, that's the beginning yeah. of starting to work on the changes we need to make. 
So if you know you got yeah. you have these fears and shame, think about what you're thinking and ask yourself, is this real? Is this true? Where did this come from? You know, mm. and move past mm. it. You know, you have to move past it. There's no, uh, you know, uh, I guess you could say treatment just to cope with fear. You have to just be aware of how you think and then just move, move on past it. Move past it. And a lot of times right. when you get over the other side of that fear, you're going to say, man, that was just, that was the only thing that was holding me back, you know. That's mm. the only thing that was holding me back is my thoughts. Not what was mm. exactly going on, my thoughts. These are not things that's actually happening when you have, you know, these uh, thoughts of fear come up. So I just yeah, say just amen. move past it, uh, step out, step out, you know. Mm-hmm. There you go. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I can yeah. recall some people that God put into my life that were much wiser than me when I was in a very, very dark valley in life because of the poor yeah. decision that I had made. I had neglected to mm-hmm. apply my faith. I basically had become the prodigal son and just turned my back on God because I felt like yeah. God wasn't doing the things that I thought he should be doing and I wasn't being patient enough. So they told mm-hmm. me when you get sick and tired, of being sick and tired, you'll do what you need to do. In other words, mm-hmm. they said when the pain of staying the same outweighs the pleasure, Ooh. then then you'll make a change. When the yeah. pain of staying the same outweighs the fear of change, then yeah. you'll change. Because the pain is compelling you to get up off of your do nothing stool like my great grandmother used to say and, <laughs> yep, and get yep. busy and get busy yes. amen so we get busy yeah. right here on this yeah. fire fire gospel experience and here's one more guy <laughs> Rashia Hodge all you got to do is say yeah yes lord help me <laughs>
You are listening to Fire, the gospel explosion where the praises are going up and the worries are going away. Playing for you the best and the newest gospel music on the planet and the most inspiring encouragement under God's heaven. Keep tuning in and bless your family, your friends, and your co-workers by telling them about Fire. Amen, amen, and amen. We will say yes to your will, Heavenly Father. We will say yes again and again and again, all over, until we get it deep down in our soul. And yes becomes a natural response to your will, Father God, and your way. And we thank you, and we give you praise for your grace, your mercy, and your patience. And dealing with us, your children. Amen. Goes right there. Sounds of woman of God. Risha Hodges letting you know that it's all about yes. If you get yes down in your spirit to the will of God, everything is going to work out. Woman of God, Tamika Ham, everything is going to be okay. want to thank man of God, Stephen yes. Byrne, for continuing to promote and manage these wonderful, anointed, and gifted artists like Risha Hodges. Thank you, man of God, Stephen Bird. Keep sending that music. Keep doing what you're doing, and I will continue to kingdom collaborate with you. Now, woman of God, if we can just figure out when to say yes, when our spirit, our mind, our situation, and all our friends are trying to get us to sell out and say no, what do we need to do to take that sanctified stand? What have you done? When you felt the pressures of the world and people around you, and maybe sometimes even inside yourself, that's telling you to resist what would be the proper thing to do, and then maybe mm-hmm. cut corners and see if you can cut to the chase and maybe get to the solution a little bit faster in your mind. How did you overcome that? Because we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. Yes, we have. And, um, you know, I... I um, I grew up in the church. Um, my family's always been a part of a church, but I didn't, I didn't grasp and get an understanding of who God was until probably my twenties. And I can remember back in maybe 2001 is when I, um, you know, officially accepted Lord as my uh, Lord as my Savior, Jesus Christ as my mm-hmm. Savior. So, um, you know, and over those years, I have, you know struggled and you know I've had situations that come up but I've always you know had you know people praying for me and I've always you know sought God on things um, even when you know I hadn't always been the best Christian I can be um, I so you know yes <laughs> yes so <laughs> um, you know just staying connected in uh in the word, um, you know, I have to give a shout out to my mom. She is a praying woman. Um, you know, she keeps me lifted. Um, mm-hmm. I have, Beautiful. you know, people in my life I know that, you know, support me and, you know, they pray for me. And, you know, and I also have to pray and, you know, ask God to help me. And he has. He has showed up and showed out and he has gotten me out of some yeah. places and he has Not helped me Not out Lord. of some things that even when I wasn't even dealing with him for real you know he 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 has kept me and you know i'm i'm blessed to this to today I, i'm a blessed woman and um you know i thank god for mm-hmm. continuing to be in my life and being ahead of my life so amen yes, sir. amen yes mm-hmm. amen well, well well you seem like and sound like a woman that's complete and whole and just got it going <laughs> on i'm just trying to figure out what in the world and how in the world <laughs> are you still a single woman? Let's talk about relationships because for me, <laughs> I've said that at the beginning of this show that relationships yeah. is everything. No man is an yes. island. I'm telling you, if he if he was Robinson Crusoe stuck on a, a maroon island somewhere, he'd be out there trying to make a woman out of coconuts or somebody to talk to. <laughs> it don't matter. We'll go crazy if we left alone by ourselves for too long. That's why the most yeah. severe punishment, even incarceration for the toughest man alive, is isolation. Mm-hmm. That's because when yeah. we don't have someone connected to us, we suffer greatly. Now, here's my thing. Yeah. We want to be in a loving, caring, kind, mutually beneficial relationship 
But yet and still, mm-hmm. you hear it so many times. Where are the available people? It seems like all the good people are taken. What do you say yeah. when you feel they feel that way sometimes, and then mm-hmm. you hear other people say that? How do we fight that off? Because if you give in to that type of defeated thinking, you, it becomes yeah. a self-fulfilling prophecy. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because what you do is you'll minimize yourself so much thinking it's hopeless, it's no use in trying, that you'll give off mm-hmm. that vibe that when Mr. Right or Miss Right come along, they will see you at maybe not your best and then keep on moving, keep passing you by because you are giving off a vibe that is not attractive. So how do we withstand that defeated thought of, I can't find nobody? Woo! That's a loaded question Woo! right there. I know <laughs> now it. Now you're getting into my personal life. All right, all right. Um, I'm gonna I'm let you. I'm gonna let you get into mine. So we 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 gonna ride it together. Come on. So first, it starts in inward. It starts with us. Um, you know, and I can speak for myself. You know, I had that. I I I lived that narrative. Like no good. You know, men out there uh, per se. But I had to look at myself yep. first. You know, because just like you said, you know, we could, when I go back, what we think, you know, our behavior is going to try to, you know, uh, 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 confirm what we think. So if I'm thinking yeah. there's no good men out there, of course my actions are going to portray that, you know. Mm. I, mm. For some reason, subconsciously, you're going to choose the wrong people. You're going to choose the wrong people. And that's kind of been my story. Just kind of... Uh, you know, allowing the wrong people in my life. And, you know, I maybe a year or so ago, you know, I got to the point. Longer than that, I'm going to say five mm. years. It's been about a good oh, five Jesus. years where <laughs> I have, you know, told myself I, I'm not settling. I can't settle for someone who's not, you know, particularly going to support where I am career-wise. And, you know, I call it a ministry, too. Um yeah. So I need that, and God has, even though I forgot I made that declaration for myself, God has reminded me over and over, <laughs> no, you're not, this person does not fit where you're going in life. So, you okay. know, just being mindful, and I do, I do believe there's someone out there for everyone, but we have to dig within, mm. you know, pray, make mm. sure we're doing what we, we're supposed to do, live in our purpose, and they'll come. They'll come at the right yeah. time. I, I do believe that, and I pr- I'm proud for that, and I believe that. So, um, you know, we can't we can't go out here and you know just be talking to anybody. I think you, I believe you can tell within the first three months if somebody's for you. <laughs> Sooner three than months. that, the first conversation, the first conversation, <laughs> for the most you can you can oh. tell and. Sometimes we get disobedient and we're like, okay, but this person is nice looking or they got this and yeah. they got that. And we try to they go smooth. on it. God mm-hmm. has shut that thing down real quick. That's been my story. Well, <laughs> well the, th- so. the thing about it, though, is there are people out there that are intentionally mm-hmm. looking for good people like you and I. What they do is, yeah. and this is some narcissistic behavior, what they do is they will mm-hmm. mirror who you are talking yeah. about. They will create a conversation. Yeah. Well, what do you like in men? Mm-hmm. And what do you like to do? And where do you like to go? And based upon your responses, they will try to give off the impression that they are the person that you say you're looking for. And yeah. I need to say mm-hmm. this as a man, because we don't talk. Men don't talk. I wrote two books. The first one for the women, Listen to the Men, Think for Yourself. I got an overwhelming and resounding response for that book. It's still on. Oh, wow. Y'all get it. I promise you it's going to bless you. But then my second book was for the brothers. It's called The Man Code, Being a Man of Purpose on Purpose. And that book did not do nearly Mm -hmm. as well as the first one because the brothers is not trying to improve. I'm saying some brothers. There are some brothers out there that are playing games, the same games that we played when we were in junior high and high school. They have not matured Mm -hmm. past that. So I sympathize with women because you all are basically in relationships with men that have the mentality 
of boys that they did when they was in junior high and high school. That's why I wrote that book, and I see it. Yeah. And I'm saying that mm-hmm. I understand what y'all go through, but can I say this to you? Uh, the sisterhood mm-hmm. nation out there, y'all always yeah. say that it's uh, our advantage numerically for the available women. Okay, let's talk about those available women. Mm-hmm. First of all, there are women out there that are still wounded, hurt, and scarred that mm-hmm. are looking for dates. Yeah. They don't need yeah. to be looking for dates. They need to be getting themselves together first. <laughs> because mm-hmm. just like y'all don't want no projects trying to fix no man, women are out there too that needs to be taken care of individually first before they start trying to invest themselves in relationship. That's one segment of women. Yes. Then there's another segment of women out there that um, are basically – looking for relationships outside their ethnicity. I have no problem with mm-hmm. it. If you fall in love with a polka dot mm-hmm. man and he got stripes, as long as he loves God and love you and take care of you, I say more power to you. I always say mm-hmm. I believe it's the different colors that make the rainbow beautiful. I don't have no problem with interracial mm-hmm. relationships. Only thing that is concerning is, is that y'all love each other, taking care of each other, and y'all prospering and growing together under the uh, favor of God. Under the favor of God. Mm-hmm. Love don't have no color. Mm -hmm. Amen. But then also, too, there are Mm -hmm. women out there that are experimenting with alternative lifestyle. So that's another segment of Mm -hmm. women that have decided that I'm so fed up with men, I'm just going to date women. And to me, that is so crazy Mm -hmm. because you go out there and get a stud woman that looks like a man, walk like a man, talk like a man, dress like a man, (laughs) but it's a woman. So that's confusion maximum right there as far as I'm concerned. And then there are women that are incarcerated, too. So that's not mm-hmm. talked about very much, Lady Tamika, but as a single man who mm-hmm. went through, I went 14 years before I remarried, which unfortunately ended in divorce after four years. But I waited 12 mm-hmm. years, and I had no idea that there were so many hurt sisters out there. So yeah. Share, yeah. With, share, share with the sisters about not being so critical to men because it's not a gender mm-hmm. issue. The same issues that go mm-hmm. on with men, there are women that have those same issues. It's just never talked about. You know good and well in these Facebook groups, whenever some men try to talk about women, first thing they say is, well, well men do the same thing. <laughs> yes. And I'm and like, just okay. Be honest. That is so annoying to me. That is so that annoying is. to me. Uh, <laughs> and I, I try not to, uh, you know, look at a lot of that content because it's, it can be discouraging if that's all you hear is like is. the men against the women. Um, and, oh. you know, I think we'll be better working together, working together. What Absolutely. is what's the solution? I just keep talking about the problem, but what is the solution yeah. uh, to yeah. the problem? And the solution is, number one, let's, let's respect one another, for one. The respect has to be right. there. You know, right. understanding and respecting differences, you know. And it's a narrative out there, too, uh, with women where, you know, women is looking for this perfect uh, man. They're looking for this perfect man because, you know, the media now is saying, well, he ain't doing this and he ain't doing that. He ain't sent from God. God mm. loves all of us. We all have flaws. We come with flaws. No one's right. perfect. Um, and we no, have ma'am. To, we have to open our minds. We have to be open to those things and be discerning. You know, sometimes... And I tell people all the time I talk to when they're you know, looking at this relationship, we all have flaws. You have to look at Everybody. what am I willing to put up with? What am I willing to put mm-hmm. up with? There are some that's a, mm. uh, you know, a no-go, you know, but there, there are some, some of those flaws will say, hey, is this something I can work with? Is this something that would, you know, match where I'm going, where it's not going to interfere or, you know, cause me to lose where I am or lose myself, you know? Mm-hmm. So... I think those things are very important, respecting respecting gender and um, just being open to the differences of uh, gender, you know. Um, Absolutely, yeah. We just got to be real. Well, well, There's a lot of false false narratives out there. We just got to be real. It is, um, it is. You know, and, and that's it where is. I go. It's a lot of good men out there, but the men are feeling pressured that they have to perform or act a certain kind of way because of these false narratives out there. And these women, we... I'm just going to be honest. We've gotten arrogant about some things, and I've been one where I'm not going to put up with this and blah, blah, blah. 
you know, and we just have to be mindful. Yeah. Use discernment, pray to God, you know, and, you know, I believe it's someone out there for everyone. Um, I just have yeah. faith, you know, it's some, it's some beautiful, beautiful people out there that's married and being successful and thriving. And I'm mm. fortunate mm. enough to know some people out there that's thriving in their marriages and them at the beginning, it didn't start off all peaky and, you know, great. And they, they survived, mm. you know, so we need to bring more highlight to those, those people, you know, it's, it's a lot of successful marriages out there that didn't start out the best. It is. So, you know, it is. It mm-hmm. is, and, and we need to mm-hmm. talk about that because, listen, when when we allow uh, emotions like anger and hurt uh, to rule mm-hmm. over our thinking, it blinds us to yeah. even the potential of somebody that may be a beautiful person in our lives. And, uh, you know, there's mm-hmm. this thing about high-value men and high-value women that I'm hearing being bantered around quite a bit on uh, yeah. social media. Um the thing that uh, I would say to the sisters is that they're talking about six figures, nice home, nice job, nice car. Okay, all that's nice. Mm-hmm. But listen, since mm-hmm. that would be your description of a high-value man, he's aware of that. Mm-hmm. And he knows mm-hmm. that he is the pride. He is the gold ring that you're trying to grasp on the merry-go-round. So do you think? Yeah. that he's not aware that he is being sought after, he is probably more than likely the <laughs> one that is causing more pain in your life because he's not trying to settle down. Nine times out of ten, this mm-hmm. person that you all are chasing is the very one that's the wolf in sheep's clothing. Amen. Goes right there. So I'm just going to. I'm just gonna put that out there because y'all, 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 y'all overlooking some good brothers. Can't see the forest for the trees. Where the where the forest at? Well, you keep stumbling over these trees. Amen. So, woman of God, Lord, help us all. I, if He just help us, we, we'll be okay. There's yeah. just one thing yeah. that I've heard uh, in relationships because you talk about we're not gonna sell them, we're not gonna compromise, and you shouldn't. But uh, there is yeah. a certain limit to tolerance. And I heard somebody say if there's a particular habit or behavior that someone that you're involved with never, ever changes, can you Mm -hmm. accept that? Can you peacefully Mm -hmm. coexist with that behavior? I wish somebody had told me that before. Mm -hmm. Well, let me stop. Anyway, anyway, I'm going to leave that alone (laughs) because y'all would be writing me, sending me emails talking about I'm bashing, folks. And everybody (laughs) that's in my past, I, I'm still yeah. keeping them on my prayer list because, like you said, one of God, great. none of us is perfect. Yeah. We've all made mistakes. Yeah. Nobody but Jesus mm-hmm. is the only one that has not come up short. So we all have room to grow, yeah. so that means we all should provide room for for forgiveness, mm-hmm. for some love, Absolutely. and some civility mm-hmm. to exist because all that does is just dampen our own spirits when yeah. we hold grudges. Yeah. And resentment. Yeah. It creates anxiety. Mm-hmm. And then we wonder why we don't mm-hmm. have no peace. It's because we push peace out of our own lives because we're holding on to Absolutely. things that is really being used by the devil to disturb us yeah. so that we won't be that bright and yeah. shining light that our Lord Jesus wants us to be. Woman of God, listen. Yeah. We have just about run out of time. And I'm going to ask you if there's anything that's in your spirit. That you've been holding on to um, That Holy Spirit God Mm -hmm. wants to pull out of you right now I'm going to give you the the, the opportunity to share anything to anybody That you need to speak to As Holy Spirit God leads and guides you If there is something, please share it with us So that we can benefit from God speaking to us through you Oh, um, there's nothing in particular I I just really appreciate this time Um, I really enjoyed this conversation that we've had. I feel like it, it, it's a continuation coming in the near future. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, oh, yeah. Yes. Continuation. But I would like to, if you don't mind, um, just kind of share. Uh, I do have a uh, uh, master class coming up that's going to deal with trauma-related issues. And I'm going to first deal with, uh, you know, spiritual and religion-type trauma. Um, that people mm-hmm. have experienced, and I think that's not talked about enough as well. Um, okay. That I want to kind of shed some more light on. Um, you know, if anyone's interested, I have a Facebook group, uh, T Coaching LLC. If you want to look that up on Facebook, um, 
You can also reach me at ecounseling.com. Um, and I just want to, you know, make aware that this is not, no way any type of uh, counseling services I will be rendered, but just some educational and information that I want to kind of uh, put out there for people to be aware of and be more educated on. So, you know, pretty, amen, amen. pretty much it. I really appreciate amen. this time. Yeah. Amen. Well, let's go bless somebody because I remember at the age of 15, uh, my mother had just all of a sudden started going to church. And uh, back in, mm-hmm. uh, what, 19, mid-70s, I don't mind telling you how old I am, how young I am, um, how long I've been mm-hmm. here. Um, I had to, uh, you know, I used to take a hot comb and press my hair out so I could get that big puffy afro like Michael Jackson <laughs> did back when the Jackson 5 was in their heyday. And Mama said, you got to get that cut down to a quo vadis. Well, that was the haircut they called it back then. They call it a fade now. And I'm like, Mama, I, 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 Mama, Mama, come on now. And, you know, um, there was just certain things I couldn't do no more. And I, I I accused the church of stealing my mama. I said, I don't know who she is. Y'all stole my mama from me. So I understand what you're saying. Sometimes those, yeah. what they call church hurts, um, yes. church anxiety, mm-hmm. um, it mm-hmm. has happened so long ago that we don't even attribute it to our behavior and our thinking patterns now. But if you dig down deep, you'll yeah. find out that maybe some things that have happened in your life was more traumatic than you may have really fully understood. And I had to get over that. Um, I had to grow mm-hmm. from that. I had to let God um, in. The, the mm-hmm. Bible says that he stands at the door and knocks. Well, once we let him in, we don't let. Once you invite company in, you don't keep them standing by the door. You invite them all the way in your house. You want them to get comfortable. You want them to enjoy other parts of the room of your house, and that's what Jesus wants to do in our life. He don't want to just stand at the door if you let him in. He wants to come into all the areas of your life where he can sit down Absolutely. and be comfortable. Because there are rooms where we shut and lock the door, and we don't let nobody in. We don't even go there because we're so afraid. We're still hurting. From things in the past. So, woman of God, I applaud the the healing ministry work that you're doing. I'm so grateful that God has given you a heart that has compassion for people because he wants to do great things in your life, and I believe that you are doing just that. So, is there a number you can be reached in case someone wants to contact you? They may have a, 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 an event in Alabama or Arkansas where I am, and they want to pay your airfare and your hotel to come and share your Ooh. wisdom. How can they reach you and um, anything else that you want to share with us uh, so that my listeners can continue to follow you on social media or whatever? Yes, um, I can be reached. Um, if you, like I said, tcounseling.com, uh, my number is on the, my website. Uh, it's 256 area code 808 5858. That's 256 808 5858. I have a uh, Facebook and Instagram handle. Uh, my Facebook what? is Counselor T. Counselor T. That's T E E. And my Instagram is Counseling Two Dash A Dash T. Counseling Two A T um, on Instagram. Yes. Amen. Amen. Woman of God, I am so fortunate to have you in my life. I will continue this kingdom collaboration until you just can't take it no more because I ain't going to quit on you. I'm going to be right there for you. I'm going to keep you in my prayer. And if I take too long, you get in touch with me and say, Brother Ron, that fire is burning in my spirit and I got a word to share with the people of God. And I'll be like, girl, I'll move some people out the way just to get you back in here. You hear me? (laughs) I appreciate that so much, Brother Ron. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You've been a blessing. You've been a blessing. You've been a blessing. I pray God will continue to lead you, guide you, cover you, and create in you a brand new spirit of effervescence and enlightenment so that what you do will only bring God more praise, more honor, and more glory. And so that day when you stand before the Lord, you you will hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's my prayer for you. And I believe it's the pastor. Thank you. I believe it's real. (laughs) Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. That is what I'm talking about in your life, woman of God, Tamika Ham. You be blessed. We love you in Jesus. Ain't nothing you can do about it except love us back and keep us in prayer. If you do that, I promise you, God will be satisfied, and I'll be a happy camper, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amen. Brother Ron. Woman of God, licensed professional counselor, Tamika Ham was right here on fire. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, 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 she was here, and she did her thing, and we ain't finished with her. We will soon have that young lady come back and uh, just bless us with more encouraging words that she has for us, more wisdom and knowledge regarding our mental health, our spiritual well-being, and relationship tips, because we are all in need of having some beautiful people in our circle. We need to be able to identify those people that are perpetrating, that ain't being for real, that's trying to come in and take advantage of our goodness. They're mistaking our kindness for weakness, for one thing. No, the reason that we're kind is because we choose to be conduits of God's kindness to us, and we want to pass that kindness on. But even the Bible says, don't take that kindness. And throw it like pearls before swine, because a pig can't appreciate no pearl. He'll swallow that thing, chew on it, and spit it out. You don't want nobody chewing on your goodness and spitting it out like it's a small, slight thing. So you all take care of yourself and find somebody that's going to prop you up, that's going to nurture you, that's going to bless you, that's going to build you up, not tear you down. Don't you know God wants to see you flourish so much so that people don't get so envious of you. If they're envious of you, that's in their heart. That ain't your concern or worry. I heard T.D. Jake say, how you feel about me ain't my business. You pray for them and move on. Surround yourself. Pray for them. And seek people that's going to nurture your life. And that you can open up too freely and say, this is who I am. And I don't tell just any old body, which will help them know that they are so special to you that they are willing to guard your deepest secrets so that those secrets can be opened up and God will bring the necessary healing. Amen. But you got to seek God for that. Amen. And if you don't believe me, this man of God, Marcus Brookings. With Lady Lakia Stokes, basically saying if you seek God, he already has the answers, the cure, and the remedy.
Hello, hello, hello. I'm Joyce Kiwana Adams, your motivational empowerment speaker, entrepreneur, author, zealous trailblazer, and certainly a born-again believer of our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Grateful to God Almighty who called me to celebrate who he is in the highest. If you're in search of someone who will speak life, love, spiritual healing, and deliverance into the atmosphere with the spirit of great worship, praise, and spoken word for your conference, revival, seminar, or fellowship, you can contact me by phone at 571-269-1378 or by email at joyuniqueness the number three, at gmail.com. I'm encouraging you also to read my book, Out of My Pain, The Birth of Joy Uniqueness, for great spiritual insight, encouragement, and an uplift. You can order my book on Amazon.com, or you can contact me directly for your autographed copy. Also, please join me on my anointed spirit-filled presentation of Unleash Your Uniqueness, which broadcasts on Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live at Joyce Kiwana Adams. If you would like to be a special guest on this Blessed by God platform, then please contact me by email at joyuniqueness3 at gmail.com. And you are listening to FIRE, the gospel experience where the fire is moving uplifting and unrestrained experience of biblical inspiration and gospel music. I'm inviting you to let the light of Jesus the Christ shine bright in your life. So by all means, keep it tuned in and to fire the gospel experience, which will uplift your spirit and give you new strength. Be a blessing to your family, friends, and coworkers by telling them about fire on this station is all about kingdom building, blessings on blessings. It was you when I was blind and couldn't see my way. It was you the whisper in my ear, everything's okay. It was you that sheltered me from the storm. It was you, it was you, yeah, that kept me warm. Help me. 
was you, it was you, it was nobody but you. Wonderful God, sons of man of God. Leo Preston, he kept me, y'all. He kept you, and guess what? He's keeping you right now. You best believe he is, even if you don't think so. Sometimes we get so caught up in our feelings, it feels like, Lord Jesus, are you still keeping me? My answer to that is yes, 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 he is. Thank you, man of God. Leo Preston, Little Rock, Arkansas, very own. Amen goes right there. I'm just happy and excited to share with you all from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, where we are talking about sowing and reaping. Amen. The word of God says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Verse 8 says, whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. So reads the NIV version of the Bible. There's a philosophical and spiritual principle that promotes reciprocity, meaning that we will get coming what we have given in the same measure, which is a very good thing, if it's a good thing. However, I believe that this spiritual principle who... I believe was initiated by the Almighty One, God, which is man's determinative way of participating in his own blessing and onward to our destiny, which again can be a good thing or a bad thing. Do we truly believe that we are connected to blessing or destitution in its many forms? Well, the first thing that we need to ascertain is God being our source. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Galatians 6 and 7. We must not be deceived about God's presence over our lives. When reciprocity seems delayed and we have believed to escape an inevitable justification, God is only utilizing his grace and mercy to our account. So we all need to steer clear of all of our potential self-delusion. Don't be misled. No one makes a fool out of God, says Galatians 6 and 7. No one makes a fool out of God. Only a fool, permanent state, and the foolish, temporary state, would even dare to mock God, make fun of, disrespect, dishonor, whatever. Our Holy One God, don't do it. What a person plants, he will harvest. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds, and he'll have to show for his life his weed. That's all he'll have to show. Listen, the Bible declares in Matthew 16 and 26, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Beloved, our human flesh, mind, encased in these human bodies, which knows and only wants to be fed the things of our surroundings, and those influences that come along with them. We grow up pressured and scrutinized by our peers and society as a whole. If and when we do or don't conform, will prominently determine the outcome of our acceptance or denial. So we must decide, is this earthbound and limited academia enough for the soul of ours that is living? Or dying a slow death of stagnation enough. We have to make that decision. We have to decide. Talking about sowing and reaping, y'all, on this fire gospel experience. Because you're going to only get what you put in. And if you don't put in nothing, shame on you. Because I promise you, you ain't going to have nothing coming. Amen goes right there. Y'all need to understand. It's all about kingdom building. If we seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, we'll never, ever forget 
the good things that God has for us. He is woman of God, Andrita Miller. She ain't going to never forget. <laughs> That's why she's singing about it, y'all. Psalm 103 says, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he's done for me. Now, I need somebody to put your hands together and bless God right here. Listen, never forget what the Lord has done. Never forget all the victories won. Never forget, I'll never forget. Never forget. Never forget what the Lord has done. I'll never never forget all the victories won. God has been so, so good. We will make sure that we build an altar in our minds so that we'll never, ever, ever forget all the good things that God has done for us. We are just sharing some thoughts from sowing and reaping from Galatians 6, verses 7 and 8. And in Luke 12, 20 and 21, our Lord Jesus tells the parable of the selfish and greedy rich man whose only goals and agendas for his life and wealth was to accumulate more wealth for himself and himself only. Luke 12 and 20 says, But God said unto him, Thou fool, 
This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. We have an old saying of wanting your cake and eating it too. When in all actuality, there's nothing objectively wrong with wanting to eat one's own cake. But subjectively speaking, I believe the thought and the moral of the story is that cake may have been a gift, possibly even from some friends to celebrate a special occasion of theirs. And the person being honored is so caught up in their own single-mindedness and selfishness to eat, enjoy, and devour them cake all by themselves that he denies, forgets, and even disregards his friends who he or she doesn't even share with. Many times, God will provide us with blessings to either show us or grow us with what he has given. That we and then the whole world can observe who we truly are when we're blessed. Now, the Lord already knows that we can surely talk up a good game. Yes, we can. But the question is, are we being for real? Galatians 6, 7, and 8. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the growth work in him, harvest a crop of real life, real eternal life. Amen. To reap God's blessed, beloved, to reap his best blessings, we must be willing to offer and plant a seed or seeds of giving, sacrifice, service, and conformity to the ways and will of God as we are continuously being transformed into the very image, likeness, and life of our Lord Jesus the Christ, moment by moment and day by day, giving you some good soul inspiration to consider to refresh your mind. And that's proof, y'all, that you are a child of God. It's through your obedient living and the light that you shine daily by walking in the very footsteps that our Lord Jesus set as our eternal trailblazer. That's proof, y'all. Here's man of God, K.T. Ellis and Kenneth Coleman backing him up, talking about proof, because proof is in the pudding. If you got it, you ought to show some sign. <laughs>
disease and destroy me. Low self esteem didn't kill me because he. Yes, Lord. So sweet, so sweet. Sounds of KT Ellis and man of God, Kenneth Coleman. He'll do it for you, Lord Jesus. That just took me to the throne. I feel like I went beyond the veil and was just in the presence of Almighty God. Thank you, man of God, for lifting our souls and our spirits to recognize that, yes, 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 God will do it. He will do it every single time. This is the portion of Fire the Gospel Experience where you beautifully gifted people that have a spoken word of encouragement, of exhortation, admonition, will speak on word of inspiration. My God, my God, you all have blessed us so much so that you all have spoken words that Holy Spirit God has put in your spirit. And I invite each and every one of you all to get in touch with me. So I can provide you with a platform so that you can do the will of the Lord in your life. Amen. Get in touch with me, Ron E. Jefferson. I'm right there on Facebook. And you can just send me a message or send me uh, a letter of information saying, hey, good brother Ron, this is brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, preacher, pastor. You don't even need a title. Just be a child of God with a word of encouragement, and I'll bring you on. Send me a message to ronaldjefferson1 at aol.com. Or just give me a call, 870-413-0220 is the number to reach me. Leave a message if I don't get right back to you. And say, Brother Ron, listen, I have a word that's on fire and anointed. Fire breathed by God for word of inspiration. And if you're busy like so many of us are, why don't you take your cell phone, put some nice soft music in the background like y'all hear me playing all the time. And for three to five minutes, record it on your cell phone recorder and then email that bad boy to Ronald Jefferson one at AOL.com and I can put you in my library. Just like I have one of God, Sharon Nisha Roach, that's going to bless us with her recorded word of inspiration. Amen. Come on, woman of God, Sharon Nisha Roach, bless us with what thus says the Lord in your soul. Hello, this is Coach Shaw, and I'm so excited to share just a moment with you. I just want to stop by and ask you, whose report will you believe? Think about that question for a moment. Whose report will you believe? So many times in life, we have the opportunity to believe what we see versus what we believe God can do for us. We believe the circumstances that say we're going to forever be in debt or the doctor's report that says our health is not well. The report from the police or the lawyers that tell you it's not, it's over, just let it go. Or you can believe what God says, that I'll never leave you nor forsake you, and that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can think or ask according to the power that is at work in you. When you're looking forward to moving into your dream life, to pursuing the thing that God has called you to do, when you're raising your children in this world and you're instilling Christian values and helping them to know right from wrong and to do right from wrong, when you're in your marriage and you're serving your spouse and you're supporting them and doing what you know to do the best when you're caregiving for your mother or your father or your grandparent or some other person that you're providing care for. All of those things will weigh you down. If you watch the news or listen to it, you'll know that things are going on. And in every opportunity of every minute of every day, you have the choice to make. Will I believe that in spite of what I see, what I think, what I feel, I can achieve it. You have the choice that in spite of what you have, 
what's in your hand, what's in your bank account, what's in your mind, that greater can come for me, that I can fulfill the call of God on my life, that I can help somebody another day, that I can actually open the business or go back to school or get married or whatever it is you're believing God for. So many times I run into people who haven't gotten that message. They believe the report of the enemy that this is all I'll ever get and this is all my life will ever be. But if I could just encourage you just for a moment to take a look at your life and then look back a little bit and know that he brought you from that, whatever that was, because we all have a that. And if he brought you from that to where you are today, he can bring you to the next place. All you need to do is trust him, believe in him, and know that he'll never leave you nor forsake you and that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all you could think or ask according to the power that is at work in you. So I just ask you, as you're going about your day and you're doing the things that you need to do, just remember the report I believe is the one of Father God, which is to bring me to a future and an expected end. And he knows what he wants for me. Let me follow him and see how this thing is going to work out because I do believe that I am more than a conqueror and I can subdue everything that is coming against me through the power of Christ. Bless you. Have a good day. My God, my God, thank you, woman of God, Sharon Nietzsche Rose, Lord Jesus, don't you know that you're a conqueror? Don't you know that you can do all things through him? You got to have him, talking about none other than almighty God, our creator, our maker. He has unlimited power. He is infinite. He is alpha and omega. All he wants to do is to just enter into an intimate relationship with you that will bless your life and you will never, ever, ever be the same. Amen goes right there. You're tuned in to Fire, the Gospel Experience. Here's woman of God, Nanyere Thomas, talking about and singing about Romans 8. And if you forgot what that means, that would be a good indication. You need to pull out your Bible, take the time, and review Romans 8, because if woman of God, Nanyere Thomas, made it uh, significant enough to sing about it, that means we need to study, read, and apply it to our lives. Amen. Work 
coming harder and faster. How do I fear what I see? No, I long to be with my refuge, a harmony peace. Long to be set free from this earthly body to complete my adoption. You finally can't be discouraging if I'm looking around to see the death and destruction and compassing me. But in those moments, you still got my back. Interceding on my behalf would work that out last. I don't know how, but it always works for my good. Cause I love you, cause be you. How you say I should? Bring that to call, justified, glorified, to have died and for me. You come against me, we'll never lose. You're only sending despair, delivered over for all. Really give me blessings whenever I call. Who brings a charge? Only God can justify. Who condemns Christ is the only one who died. Break from the dead, seated at the right hand of God. Interceding on my behalf, they give love to all. Who can separate me from the love of Christ? I'm suffering or a sword. You've already conquered that and much more. Give me the strength be persecuted. But in all these things, all things things, all things things, Lord, I overcome. Yes, I overcome through your love.
amen, amen, and amen. When you got Jesus, oh, you got it going on. That's all you need. Sounds of Michigan Nightingale, sooner or later. You know you're going to need Jesus. You might as well get it in your spirit and get that Jesus down in your soul right now. Right now, my homeboys from Michigan, state of Michigan. Y'all know I was born in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. But I grew up in Detroit, so Detroit is always with me. Michigan is always with me. I want to thank my special guest, Lord Jesus, that woman of God, Tamika Ham. She just came in and just set the place right. I mean, my God, my God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming in and blessing us so much and so well. I am just so delighted to have these spirit-filled and godly people a part of this fire gospel experience. And thank you, woman of God, Sharon Nietzsche Rose, for sending us that word of inspiration. I have it in my library. I'm certainly looking for more inspiration from you so that you can bless the people of God and honor God with the wisdom and the inspiration words that he gives you to bless you and yours first and then spread the love and bless us as well. I want to leave you with one final thought before I see you on the next fire, fire, fire gospel experience. Let us be the person and friend that we would want other people to be for us. Amen. Goes right there. So until next time, I leave y'all with awesome millennial gospel singer, woman of God, Gayla James, putting it down and letting you and I and everybody else know that, Lord Jesus, I am just so, so blessed, and I'm happy to have it that way. So until next time, I pray God bless you, keep you, cover you, and lead and guide you to your own personal promised land so that you can be victorious over anything that comes against you while you are living for God, building the kingdom of God, and keeping all of its righteousness first and foremost in your life. If you do that, You'll be sowing and reaping, and you'll be so blessed if you press it down and shake it together, it'll still be running over. You'll have to go and run find somebody blessed, and that's the whole idea. Bless y'all in the beautiful name of Jesus, our Savior, our Messiah, and our Lord. Hallelujah. Hello, I'm urban Christian artist Gayla James, an anointed gospel artist that is called by God to celebrate who he is in the highest. If you're in search of someone that would change the atmosphere with the spirit of great worship and praise for your concert, revival, seminar, or fellowship, you can contact me by phone 239-867-1273 or by email galajames.james1 at gmail.com and you are listening to fire the gospel experience where the fire is moving uplifting an unrestrained experience of biblical inspiration and gospel music i invite you to let the light of jesus shine bright in your life so by all means keep it tuned in to fire the gospel experience which will uplift your spirit and give you new strength. Be a blessing to your family, friends, and co-workers by telling them about fire on this station. It's all about kingdom building. Drink out the time that you made a way for me. Can't count the times that you have protected me. Can't count the times that you brought me out. If I could, I know I would tell everybody that I'm For me, can't count the times that you have gave me food to eat. Can't count the times that I could have been gone, but you allowed me to.
If I had 10,000 tongues, couldn't tell it all. Cause you brought me through, through it all. So many things you've done for me. You opened doors that I could not see. And I'm blessed, blessed. I am blessed. Yeah. <laughs>